We're going to go to that Nuri restaurant, you said? I've been told, yes, on our anniversary Ooh. in October, that's where yeah. we're going. Can't yeah. wait to hear the report back on that. <laughs> me too, oh, and me to see the bill. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an awesome looking place. She's going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, right, she will. And uh, But it's, it sounds like an awesome place. I, yeah, I, yeah, I can't wait to hear. I yeah, yeah I'm excited yeah. about that. Okay, let me show you this. I want to talk about the Northern Lights. You, you guys saw this back in May. I mean, I've personally never seen the Northern Lights before, but many people in North Texas saw that back in May. This is at Cary Monster saw this. Look at Jennifer Horowitz. And you guys remember this? There's Whitesboro. Yeah. Saw the Aurora in Whitesboro, May 10th. So, so the, it, the Aurora activity, it's on the rise. So these, these are solar storms. They're, they're caused by solar flares and coronal mass ejections that often originate from sunspots. Okay, so that's why we have the Northern Lights. We have these, these sunspots. And we, right now, we're starting to see more increased solar activity. We're currently in a period that, uh, really, it's a period of heightened solar activity that began in 2019 and it's going to peak in 2025 so we still have a little bit more time typically these auroras are seen near the poles okay but the stronger storms can push them to lower latitudes like uh, north texas so the northern lights they're really hard to predict uh, especially the intensity and the visibility in north texas but we have about another year year and a half of increased activity so we'll do our best to give you a, a, at least a 24 hour update as to when you can see it. Nothing on the horizon right now, but we'll be keeping our eyes out. We'll certainly let you know. We have clear skies out there tonight across the, uh, the entire United States, across the northern plains into the central plains, the central Rockies, the southern Rockies, some showers and thunderstorms in those locations. Otherwise, it's a big ridge of high pressure. That's the story as we, it's really our summer weather pattern. This big ridge of high pressure, it's in control. It kind of meanders across our part of the United States before Finally, it settles off to the southeast. Uh, so all that means for the remainder of August is dry, hot, humid for now. Temperatures upper 90s to right around 100 degrees. Late August, especially as we get into uh, the three or four days leading up to uh, Labor Day, we have a low chance of a little bit of rain. I don't have much, but a little something. 10, 20 percent coverage is better than nothing. Then you look at the high temperatures as we head through uh, Monday. So for the next five days, Again, that upper 90s, right around 100 degrees. So that's cooler than the 103, the 104, the 107 that we hit the last three days. Heat indices 103 up to 108. So certainly uh, hot temperatures are going to be in the forecast. Tonight, not a bad night. We've been in the 80s. Tonight we'll drop into the 70s, 77 for the low. Breezy, less humid, mostly clear skies tonight during the day tomorrow. A mostly sunny day, a hot day, a dry day, a humid day. We hit 100 tomorrow. There's the next 14 days, and look at that. Uh-huh. few triple digits, a few upper 90s, no rain for the first seven of the 14. And then when you look at the final seven of the 14, there we go. I have a little bit of rain. It's not much, but I do have a little bit of rain in the forecast as we head through the next, uh, oh, that Thursday the 29th, right through uh, Sunday, September 1st, a little bit of rain. Right now, Labor Day, dry, sunshine, hot, 95 degrees, which is what most Labor Days are here in North Texas. And this one will not be the exception.